In today's video, we're going to review and discuss the Mego Stan Lee, the NECA Christmas Vacation Chainsaw Clark, and Tom Atkins head. Welcome to the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Brett. If you're a returning subscriber, I just want to thank you for coming back. And if you're new to this channel, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please consider clicking both that subscribe button as well as that notification bell below. We upload videos on a regular basis in which we review anything and everything horror from action figures and toys to soundtracks, various collectibles, video games, you name it. And today we're taking two non-horror related things, one semi-horror related thing, and we're going to combine them. We're going to do a special video today where we're going to make our own custom figure. So we'll talk about that in a second. But up front, I do want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to Rocco the Great. You can follow his channel. I'll put a link to that below or up there somewhere. Follow his channel. He's got some great toy hunting videos of all sorts, not just horror, but any type of toy that you're interested in. And he also does some very good videos on how to customize figures, collecting, the hobby, etc., all with a great sense of humor. So I highly recommend you to go follow Rock with a Great. Follow him on Instagram as well. He's always posting some good content on there. I reached out to him after I saw his customized Tom Atkins figure. And he was very kind. And he sent me a Tom Atkins head sculpt that he molded based on the Night of the Creeps Tom Atkins figure. And I painted that. Made that. We'll look at that in a second. But I painted that to make it look like Tom Atkins, Dr. Chalice from Halloween 3. So I think you know where we're going here. We're going to make our own Dr. Chalice Halloween 3 custom figure. Because we don't have one yet. I would like one. I'm sure a lot of you would like one. We do have the Night of the Creeps figure, which I'm very thankful to have. But I wanted to get a Dr. Chalice from Halloween 3. One of my favorite Halloween movies, uh, Halloween time movies not necessarily Halloween movies, although it's probably number two or number three on the list of best Halloween movies. But um, Halloween time, I love watching Halloween 3 season of The Witch. Uh, highly recommend it. Gets a bad rep uh, for such a long time, but it is a really good film. In fact, NECA did come out with some Halloween 3 figures, and I did review them right there, so check those out. But uh, let's get into these figure reviews first. So the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about this Stanley figure that Mego came out with. Stanley, of course, one of the creators of classic Marvel superheroes such as Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, Fantastic Four, the list goes on and on, X-Men. Uh, you know, he was involved in such a great time in Marvel Comics history, and it was because of him that we have so many of those great movies that are coming out today. So uh, Stanley, of course, passed away a little while ago. Lived a very long life, but I've always enjoyed Stan Lee. Used to read his editor's comments or mail-in section of the comic books when I was a, a young kid reading all those comics, all those old comics. But uh, also had a great cameo in the movie Mallrats from the 1990s. You um, looking at that couple inside? Actually, I was just looking at this uh, little pink number over here. Oh, yeah, that's kind of nice. They look happy, don't they? What, the bras? No, the couple. They look happy. I guess, as far as couples go. You know, it reminds me of an issue of Spider-Man I did when Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy went lingerie shopping. Of course, the Green Goblin showed up, and he pumpkin-bombed the hell out of the place. But aside from that, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Oh, my God. Holy shit! Aren't you? Oh, Stanley. Hi. Mego did a Stanley. Of course, it says legend right there. Stanley's Pow Entertainment 8 inch action figure, 14 points of articulation. There's Stan the Man right there, and there's his figure. And on the back, just another picture of that Stanley. Gives us a little blurb about Mego Corp. We don't have to read that. So, not much to the packaging, but there's the figure right there. We'll open it up in a second and give it a proper review. The next figure that we're going to take a look at in this that we'll give a mini review to is this. And this box is beat to hell. I actually ordered this off of eBay and it was already beat up. So I got a little bit of a discount on it. 
but I knew I was just going to open it up anyway. This is the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Chainsaw Clark. A great Christmas movie to watch. Watch it every year, multiple times a year. Uh, probably the best vacation movie, in my opinion. Um, National Lampoon's Vacation is a really good one, but Christmas Vacation I think I like more than the original. This is when Clark comes out of the house with the chainsaw and the hockey mask on, a la Jason Voorhees. Hey Griswold, where do you think you're going to put a tree that big? Bend over and I'll show you. You've got a lot of nerve talking to me like that, Griswold. I wasn't talking to you. And you can see the figure right there. We'll talk about that in a second on the side of the box. It's got a picture from that scene in the movie. And on the back, there's a picture of the figure. And it says... This Christmas, in Clark's quest for the perfect family gathering, he'll short out Chicago's power grid, electrocute a cat, battle a tree-loving squirrel, hold his boss hostage, and spend some quality time with the local police department. Maybe it'll be a Merry Christmas after all. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation Chainsaw Clark. You know, I saw this figure a lot of times when at the store, and because I primarily collect horror, I thought about getting it because it's kind of supposed to symbolize horror with the hockey mask and everything. But at the same time, I was just kind of like, meh, I don't need, I don't need it. I, you know, I have limited room as is, so I kind of want to just stick with strictly horror, but I needed to get this for what we're going to do today. And then last but not least is this Tom Atkins head mold. This is a direct mold from the Tom Atkins Night of the Creeps figure. And Rocco did this mold and uh, sent it to me and I painted it. It came white. I painted it, uh, he's got the brown hair. Uh, in person, you can see there's some highlights to the hair that I did, because he's got brownish, blondish hair in the movie. It's a younger Tom Atkins. But I thought it turned out pretty good, all things considered. I mean, this is just a recast of an already existing mold, and it's a customized figure. It's not, I'm not a professional. I'm trying to get, this is like my first custom figure that I've ever done my first real custom figure that I've ever done. So I just kind of wanted to get all the pieces together and uh, try to see if I could make it look okay, somewhat okay. So why don't we go ahead, open up the figures, give them a review, and then we'll put together our custom figure. All right, I got the figures open. And before we get to the figures themselves, let's go ahead and talk about these accessories that come with this Chainsaw Clark figure from NECA. We've got a few accessories. Uh, let's first and foremost talk about the chainsaw. I mean, after all, he is Chainsaw Clark. This is actually a really good chainsaw. I, I picked it up out of the package and I was like, wow, this is really cool. It's, it's better than some of the ones that I think came with the Leatherface. Of course, it's a different style and it's uh, relatively newer than maybe some of the chainsaws Leatherface might have. But the attention to detail is great. You got the, the chain, which has the different blades on it, colored in that silver. And you got this metallic like black finish on the blade itself. You got some great detail in the vents that just show, you know, a little bit of wear, not too much, but shows just the really good attention to detail, especially in that yellow part right there and on this side. Just with the different, like I said, the wear marks, uh, kind of dirty it up and everything. And then back here is various different switches and hoses and knobs and buttons. And then, of course, this is where you put the gas in, the pull handle. That's where you put the gas in. I don't know. I don't have a chainsaw. But if I did, it would look something like this. But this is a really good, good size, good weight, good stability. The blade is is uh, softer, but not bent pliable. Uh, it's pliable, but it doesn't like stay in its shape. So it kind of snaps back. It's got a little bit of a spring to it, which is kind of nice. So I definitely do dig this chainsaw. So that's the first accessory. The second accessory, of course, is this hockey mask. Now, this doesn't really look like a Jason Voorhees hockey mask, per se. Maybe from the Part 5 uh, VHS cover art, this is what it looked like. But not like 
Jason's hockey mask that we know and love. But it's still really good. It's just a white hockey mask, and it's got these leather straps going around. Uh, this is just soft rubber, but it's got the little buckles in detail right there. You can see kind of in the top one where that soft rubber makes it look like it's a, a leather bound buckle. You even got some extra leather right here, extra rubber right here, simulating leather, kind of hanging off the back. Gives it a nice little added feature. So overall, pretty good for a hockey mask for an action figure. This might come in handy for another custom we do someday. Who knows? We also get this Wally's World cup, not eggnog cup, maybe. Oops. So kind of a nice little neat accessory that Wally's World, Wally World. Wally's World? Wally World? So that looks cool. Put that aside. And last but not least, we have another set of hands. Of course, Clark comes with gloves on his hands. We are actually going to use these actual hands, uh, ungloved hands, but uh, NECA always puts some great detail into their hands, which is what I like. Uh, this is the right hand. Kind of looks like it's maybe made to hold the mug, and this is the left hand. Get a focus right there. This is the left hand. So they look really good. All right, so that's it for the accessories that came with it. Let's go ahead and talk about this figure. Before we get into the details of the figure, let's just go through some of the articulation. The head is on this ball joint and it just moves back and forth, side to side, up and down, all that good stuff. Got a ball joint in the shoulder, causes the arm to move out and then it can turn around as well. He's kind of got a little bit of a bulky vest on right now. He has a joint in his elbow, which you can bend back and forth. His hand, of course, turns in and out and all the way around at the wrist. He can swivel at the hip or at the waist, bend at the waist, and then he's got his knee joints that fully bend, and then his sh feet or shoes which go uh, up and down and then turn uh, at the top here. The one thing that this figure doesn't have is it doesn't have peg holes on the bottom, so you would need a figure stand to stand them up or find a nice balance. Now, this figure does have pretty big feet, uh, kind of like the Stan Lee figure, so it's pretty easy to stand. You don't necessarily need to have a figure stand. I like using them personally because I have these cabinets and with opening and closing the doors sometimes, the figures can fall over. So all in all, pretty good articulation on this figure. Let's talk about the likeness. This is a pretty good Chevy Chase likeness. A little comical, um, but it definitely looks like Chevy Chase. I mean, you look at this and you know that it's Chevy Chase. So Clark, Clark Griswold is very well represented in this figure. His hair, just that molded rubber, and then got that dimple in the chin which gives it away almost immediately this is green vest on this is velcroed on a red undershirt and these gloved hands that i talked about pretty good detail in the hands there or in the gloves i should say well, let me show you the back side of the vest just this nicely knitted vest it's actually you know a little bit bulky but it it feels nice and then he's got these khaki pants on of a tweed pattern almost but khaki pants and then he's got these brownish boots that he's wearing or shoes that he's wearing so those look pretty good all in all i would uh really rate this figure well that's the that was the figure not me I would really rate the figure uh, a high rating. I think it's definitely a, a good showpiece to have, especially if you're into just collecting any of the 8-inch line of NECA figures. This uh, Chainsaw Clark would be a great one to have. I don't know what other vacation figures they came out with, but if they came out with some other ones. I know I also do uh, displays with some of my Christmas caroling uh, NECA figures of the Gremlins. And I do that display at Christmas time, maybe out, out of this room. So if you had like a Christmas display, you could put 
Clark Griswold in the middle of it holding the chainsaw. That would be kind of funny, kind of humorous. But uh, all in all, I, I would have to give this figure five out of five Pamela Voorhees heads. I mean, it's a good figure. It looks good. Uh, it's It does its job. It's not a horror figure, so I wouldn't collect it personally. But for anybody out there who just likes to collect the 8-inch line of NECA figures, I highly recommend this if you can find it. Um, I don't know if they're still in stores. Maybe around the holidays they'll be back in stock. But uh, you can definitely find them on eBay. The next figure we're going to talk about right here is Stan Lee. This is a Mego figure. Uh, similar in size. Slightly shorter than Clark there. Similar in size, but this is a Mego figure. It doesn't come with any accessories. This, of course, is Stanley. Let's talk about the articulation. Now, there's supposedly 14 points of articulation on these Mego figures. Sometimes I can find them all, sometimes I can't. Head moves. We have movement in the upper torso right here. It gives us kind of that ab crunch. And then he move. He can swivel all the way around. And then he can bend at the waist. He's got that, that knee bend. And his feet bend up and down and in and out, kind of at the hip. He's got that ball joint in the shoulder, elbow joint, and then of course his wrists turn and the hands go in and out. As far as the details on this figure, I'll just kind of run through this really quick. It looks like Stan Lee. I mean, it looks enough like Stan Lee that I know that this is what the figure is supposed to be. So pretty good likeness there of Stan Lee himself. He's wearing this jacket which is one of the reasons why I wanted this figure. Underneath the jacket, he has just a green shirt on. He also is wearing khakis, much like Clark there. Hand detail is just pretty simple. And then his feet are just these white sneakers. Here's the back side of the figure. You can see the hair detail right there, kind of the silver grayish hair that Stan Lee had, especially when he was a little bit younger. All in all, I mean, you can see the difference between the figures and the, the quality here. You're also paying twice or maybe sometimes three times as much for a NECA figure, NECA um, eight inch line of figure than you are a Mego figure. This runs usually around $15. This usually runs brand new, probably around $30 to $40. If you're ordering it and it's harder to find, you're going to spend a little bit more, but it also comes with more and has uh, more detail. So you can see the difference of those side by side. I do, I have been recently finding a lot of these Mego figures. Um, Mego's coming out with a lot of horror line of figures, so I've been looking at those quite a bit recently, and I, for one, really like them. I, I didn't like them at first, but I'm starting to become a pretty big fanboy of Mego. So for the price, 15 bucks, you're getting a nice representation of a character that maybe you normally wouldn't get. So I like it. So we've done our review. We have our two figures. We have Stan Lee. We have Clark Griswold. And we also have Tom Atkins head. Now I'm going to preface this by saying this was a mold that uh, I got from Rocco. And uh, when he sent it to me, it was just white and I painted it. This is my first time ever painting a miniature like this. So I did the best that I could. And you can see it's not perfect in a lot of areas, but uh, it looks pretty good. The mold had some imperfections in it. You can see there's an imperfection right there in the nose. There was a little air bubble that, that popped through in that. I'm okay with that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect as far as I'm concerned, but uh, maybe I can touch it up with a little bit of paint or put a little bit of putty in there to fill that out later on, but it's okay as far as I'm concerned. Um, I have no problem with that. So I painted this, got this. So what we need to do, this is this was the recipe that Rocco suggested in his video, and I'll put a link to his video right here. This is the original video that I saw that inspired me to do this. We're gonna take off the Clark Griswold head. We're gonna take off the hands put the alternate hands on. We're gonna take off the vest. We're gonna take the members only jacket from Stan Lee, put him on our now Dr. Chalice figure, and we'll have a Dr. Chalice. So why don't I go ahead and do that? And we'll come right back for our final review. Oh, by the way, five out of five heads for the Stan Lee figure as well. Why not? 
All right, got the figure set up, how I'm going to have them displayed. And I got to say, this looks pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what I did to the figure. So, of course, this is the Tom Atkins head mold from the Night of the Creeps figure uh, for Tom Atkins that I painted, made it look a little bit more like Dr. Chalice or what Tom Atkins looked like in Halloween 3. This is the Clark Griswold body, different hands that came with the Clark Griswold figure from Christmas Vacation Chainsaw Clark figure. Took the vest off, replaced it with the Stan Lee Mego figure jacket, this kind of members only jacket. And then I took this mask, which I got in that Halloween 2 collection of those little eggs, those little toy capsules. Came with this like pencil topper, I guess it was, that looked like the skull mask that that kid is wearing. So I thought it would be great to put it in his hand because at one point in time, Tom Atkins, Dr. Chalice, is forced to strap to a chair and put that mask on and forced to watch TV uh, in uh, hopes that his head will some way turn out like this. Doesn't happen. Tom Atkins wins. But he doesn't stop the commercial from playing everywhere else in the country. Dark masks, gather round your TV set, put on your masks, and watch. All witches, all skeletons, all jack o' lanterns. The third gather commercial, round, it's still watch. on, please. Watch Take off the third content. channel, the third channel, it's still running. Oh, stop it, please, for God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to, please, stop it, stop it now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 So I really think this looks good. I'm going to give myself and let's see NECA, Migo, Rocco, and the Swearwolves. I'm going to give us all five out of five Pamela Voorhees heads for this figure. So special thanks again to Rocco the Great. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel. Check out his videos, his Instagram. And uh, of course, if you like this video, please click the like button below. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed and you feel so inclined, click both that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. We are the Swearwolves Horror Podcast, and we do a weekly show in which we review horror movies. So please check us out by searching for The Swearwolves, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. You can also visit our website at theswearwolves.com. So for The Swearwolves, I'm Brett. Hi, this is Brett with the Swearwolves. When I'm not editing videos or creating content for YouTube, I just sit here and wait and wait. If you like the video that you just saw, go ahead and click that button right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that other button right there. I'll wait.